Welcome to Girls Night In at the Works. Tonight we're going to be looking at is an investigation and exploration of the science and art of glass, where we're going to get to see some hot glass demonstrations in our hot shop, and we're also going to be able to explore the art of cold fused glass on our own and make our own creative explorations. As the Director of STEM Education at the Works, my job is to both develop and oversee the STEM after school programming and all the parts that go with that. The three programs that we offer through the Battelle STEM After School Grant are Girls Night In, the STEM After School STEM Club, and the STEM After School GEMS Club. When we concepted the program, we developed it with sustainability in mind. So the impact has to be much more than just the interaction that we have when we're in the classroom with these students or when we are engaging with them in out of classroom experiences. And so we also focus on engaging the teachers in the community in supporting and developing their own STEM after school network so that we can focus on the sustainability long after the, um, the initial programs have started. It not only gives you materials to do STEM activities and delve deeper into content, but it also provides help from the works in the form of a mentor to come out and help you. There have been lots of stories of success from these programs. One girl was like, oh, I'll do it if you want me to. So I kind of talked her into it because she's a really great science student. And at, towards the end of it, she's like, I'm going to be a chemical engineer. This stuff is amazing. That's all she would talk about was, I'm going to be a chemical engineer. And then there's a, a sixth grade boy who even came to STEM after school, and he was sick. But he wanted to stay after school to do science. I'm like, that, you can't, you can't get that. A group of educators got together and decided we, we weren't really addressing the needs of teens because I think we focus on um, programs that are in the schools often and we know that teens are looking for things beyond school and this was us trying to find a better solution for teens in Central Ohio. Well on paper you know it's a drop-in space an open space for teens to come, you know, get into different arts and different things and kind of figure out their passion. But to me, this is a home and identity for teens. Andre came to us um, as one of those passionate teens. I mean, I think everybody who meets Andre sees the energy he has. I came here first when I was about 16 years old. I was interested in a recording studio. But then kind of, you know, got into other stuff like our sewing machines, um, learned how to paint on canvases and shoes. And then I took that, and then once I turned 19, I got offered a job here. Now, I'm actually one of the lead mentors of Teen, Teen Open Studio. Transdisciplinary learning is this learning that is driven by the interests and ideas of the teens. And so over the past two and a half years, we've really seen it explode. And we've, start, we've got folks coming back again and again who've been regular participants in Teen Open Studio for longer than I've worked at the museum. And they help me find things. It's great. So I created this program called STEM Rocks the Box, which is basically a field experience for these students to learn what it's like to be a professional artist and using the arts to teach kids that they can use it no matter what they pursue in life. Um, learning how to project, learning how to control your nerves in an unfamiliar situation, teamwork, personal preparation. There's all these things that they carry on with them throughout their lives. If you want to innovate, the way it's always been done is the very worst way you can innovate. The way to innovate is to do it a way that's never been done before. And that's what STEM Rocks the Box is to me. It's an innovation so unique. The way that it turns children into thinking citizens. And I've seen these kids outside of the theater, outside of the school, just tackling projects. I have to talk to a board director, no problem. I have to talk to the President of the United States, no problem. I do not experience fear the same way anymore. I had a, a wonderful story of a girl that was, I mean, to be honest, she was not a key player in the participants, but she attributed her experience with STEM Rocks the Box for being able to go in front of a board and advocate for herself for a scholarship, and she got the scholarship. And I heard from this from one of the panelists on there, and 
I was like, wow, what a, what a gift to be able to give that to her, you know, and help her on her life's path. It's, it's changed the way I think about things, you know? It's not just an arts organization, it's an arts organization that can have true impact on the community. And to have that fulfillment in your everyday life is wonderful. We love how Patel's talking about STEM. And this is the big difference between a funder and what Patel's done. They got the philosophy, they got, they understood what we were trying to accomplish. They've been champions of the work. The scope of their impact is really kind of awe-inspiring when you think about what can get done and the impact it has on the students. So, and it's, it's both small projects and big projects. And I think that's really important to recognize and for them to continue. First of all, I am forever grateful for Battelle. They believed in the program. They were willing to go with it. It was an unknown. They were willing to, they saw, they saw the vision. I was uh, forever grateful that they saw the vision. They understood kind of where I was going and were willing to go out on a limb and take a chance and, and provide support for it. Doing things that have never been done before is second nature for them. They, they create things that don't exist. They solve problems that most people don't realize are even issues and I admire them for the way that they push that back into this community.